Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy and a study that confirms once and for all that Einstein was definitely right and Newton when it comes to gravity was maybe not so right. In other words, we're going to be talking about a study that um, very thoroughly analyzes the motions of stars very close to the black hole to try to understand how the gravity really works. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, if you had a really powerful telescope, like for example, the one that was used to take the uh, first ever photo of a black hole, and if you were to look right there in the middle of the Milky Way itself, you would discover something very peculiar. We can actually kind of simulate this using Space Engine by zooming into this location um, and trying to take a look at this region right here. Now, you don't really see anything yet because nothing is really moving just yet, but let's say we accelerated time and looked at this um, through a period of about 20 years. And this is where you start seeing this unusual motion around the imaginary, very massive point in the middle. That's obviously how we discovered the black hole. But what we know about this now is that there are certain stars there that only take um, roughly around 11 to 16 years to orbit the black hole once. And uh, one of the most famous such stars we've talked about uh, several times on the channel uh, was actually discussed almost exactly a year ago in another study where they analyzed the redshifts. And I've discussed this in a video from a year ago that you can find somewhere above my head. But essentially, uh, we were able to calculate the redshifts of these stars very precisely, confirming the redshift in effects that we would expect to observe close to such a massive body. Now, the study that we're discussing today uh, could have released their data back then as well, but they wanted to confirm all of this, so they took an extra year. And their main goal was to confirm uh, the orbital parameters as well. They wanted to see if Einstein was right, and also if his famous general theory of relativity could withstand the test of time. Now, what's really cool about uh, the release of paper in 2019 is that exactly 100 years ago, was the first attempt to prove Einstein's theory experimentally. Now, this was done using two sets of telescopes. Uh, one set was placed somewhere in Brazil and one was on the west coast of Africa. And both were observing the 1919 solar eclipse. And the reason they picked a uh, solar eclipse to try to prove Einstein's theory is because, well, moon basically blocks the sun. And so you can actually look at the edges of the sun right here and try to detect uh, various stars that, uh, or various starlight that passed really close to the sun, thus experiencing the lensing effect. In other words, they were trying to prove um, Einstein's idea that uh, sun's gravity is powerful enough to bend the light and produce lensing effects. And well, guess what? It was proven by this wonderful person, Sir Arthur Stanley Eddington, who was able to show that several of the stars, even though they should have been appearing in uh, this location, were actually appearing somewhere else. In other words, the light from those stars was um, lensed. It was gravitationally affected and bent by the gravity of the sun. And so this paper that you can find uh, in the description below decided to once again try to prove this idea, but also take this a little bit further by using the most massive body in the vicinity, the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star, and the nearby star passing close to it known as S2, also known as S02. That's the star we're actually kind of uh, looking at right now, and you can see that every uh, 16 years, this particular star comes really, really close to the supermassive black hole. Let's see if we can maybe zoom in a little bit more. And so right at this location, it's going to have a really, really fast velocity of close to about 2.5% of the speed of light. It's going to move really, really fast and it's going to experience a lot of um, effects that can only be explained by Einstein's theories. And so the scientists behind this paper uh, basically decided to once and for all settle the idea of orbits. Is Newton or Einstein correct when it comes to orbital parameters around really, really massive objects that start exhibiting these uh, unusual gravitational effects? So in other words, if Newton is correct, the orbits here would be kind of similar to what you can create in um, simple simulations like Universe Sandbox, where if you have a black hole and you place an object orbiting around this black hole like I did right here, this is just a white dwarf, um, the orbit here will stay more or less 
stable and will not really change much with time. It's not going to be affected by these uh, effects from the general theory of relativity that Einstein predicted because this simulation is not able to actually um, create those effects. It's very, very complex. But uh, in reality, uh, the actual orbit should actually change. It should even uh, change so dramatically around the supermassive black hole that you should be able to observe it quite easily. The scientists behind this paper even predicted that um, right around this location, somewhere here, the velocity should be about 200 kilometers per second higher, and then it's going to slowly decrease. In other words, there should be about 200 kilometers per second difference in velocity close to the supermassive black hole. That should not be explainable by simple Newtonian physics. And here we can even try to simulate this um, a little bit closer to the black hole by moving a little bit closer to the star just to see how it uh, orbits around the black hole itself. You can see the black hole right there in the distance and this is the S2 star as simulated in Space Engine. And well, guess what they discovered? They discovered that Einstein was almost 100% correct. Their uh, prediction and their actual observational results were almost spot on. Uh, you can check out more about this in the paper itself. But this graph here kind of explains pretty much everything. The Newtonian prediction is right there on the bottom. The um, general relativity prediction is here. And the best fitting model that they discovered was in red. Now this is within the error parameter, so it does actually kind of fit within the um, Einstein's theory. And right here on top, you can see that the velocity was close to about 200 kilometers per second um, at the location where the star was the closest to the black hole. In other words, the, the actual change in velocity due to the Einstein's theory was about 200 kilometers per second more than it should be if uh, we just considered Newtonian physics. Which of course suggests that Einstein was pretty much spot on when it comes to gravitational interaction of massive bodies. Now this doesn't really explain what happens really, really close to the black hole, specifically inside the black holes, because Einstein's theory doesn't go that far. And for that we need a completely different theory that we don't really have just yet. And this is kind of how the uh, paper is finished. By suggesting that we need to start looking at other theories that might be able to explain what's really happening inside the actual black hole to see if we can somehow combine the gravitational theories that we currently have and turn them into one single theory of physics but we are really, really far from that happening. Our current understanding of physics kind of ends right here, right at the border of the black hole horizon. And don't forget, because S2 takes approximately 16 years to orbit the black hole once, it means that we can have another follow-up observation and possibly another more advanced study done in about um, 16 years from now, in 2034. This is probably what's going to happen anyway, because we're going to have a lot better telescopes by then and we'll be able to see even further and be able to detect even more effects. But uh, the scientists behind this paper are now interested in other stars in the vicinity because there's at least one other star that orbits even faster. Uh, this star right here, known as S0102, orbits the black hole every 11 years and so we can use it for even more detailed observations or to study gravitational effects even more. But in the end, what this study shows is that um, despite our predictions and our theoretical observations, it's very likely that everything we know about the universe today, theoretically, is actually true um, experimentally as well. In other words, what we predicted um, using Einstein's theories or other theories that look at the formation of the universe itself and also various interaction of galaxies and stars, even though it is to some extent theoretical, is based on really solid ideas and really solid knowledge that we've uh, known for about 100 years. In other words, everything we know about, for example, black holes and neutron stars and so on, even though we don't really physically know what's happening there, is basically probably true because we were able to prove the foundational ideas, the ideas that all of this is based on, by doing experiments like this, by looking at stars and their interaction with very strong gravitational points. And even though, uh, even today, there are still some physicists that are trying to prove Einstein wrong or are trying to uh, show that the universe works in a completely different way from what we believe, the actual experimental proof shows us otherwise. It shows us that Einstein was absolutely correct, that gravity works exactly how we think it works. And at the same time, it shows us that the foundation of modern physics is pretty damn solid. Well, anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. You can check out the paper in the description below. But most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about the universe in general, and space, sciences, and other really cool stuff. 
and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.